patients always ask about postoperative pain. They seem to often anticipate tremendous waves of unbearable pain, or conversely, they expect no discomfort at all. Neither of these expectations is reasonable. It is unrealistic for a patient to expect to have surgery and experience no pain afterwards. Patients who are reality-oriented in this regard have a much better recovery time than those expecting to be completely numb. Some pain is unavoidable, but severe pain can be identified and relieved. Often pain complaints are actually anxiety, but a patient coming out from under anesthetic cannot be expected to differentiate the two. As anesthesiologists, we are trained to identify indicators of pain. Increases in heart rate or blood pressure are two common indications of pain. In the absence of physical indicators, anxiety is treated with the use of a sedative or anxiety medication. Incidentally, if anxiety is relieved, we can often reduce the amount of pain medication and consequently reduce the incidence of nausea and vomiting and other side effects. A patient can reasonably expect to receive medication for complaints of pain following surgery. They will usually be administered intravenously. Several different types of medications are available depending on your surgery, the location of your surgery, for example, office, surgery, center, hospital, inpatient versus outpatient, that sort of thing, your allergies and sensitivities, and even where you are going postoperatively. There is no universal panacea, that is, no one solution fits all situations. And as you have learned, your treatment needs to be individualized. For procedures involving the chest cavity, abdominal cavity, or the arms or legs, continuous regional anesthetic techniques can be used postoperatively to minimize pain. Epidural catheters can be placed preoperatively and used postoperatively to administer anesthetic or narcotic medications into the spinal canal to blunt the perception of pain yet leave a patient completely mobile. If you have realistic expectations, there is no reason to suffer following surgery. There are a number of anesthetic choices and regional anesthetic management techniques to minimize the amount of postoperative pain. Don't be afraid to ask your surgeon and anesthesiologist about the degree of pain associated with your procedure and what provisions they will make for your comfort. Let's turn our attention now to what is without a doubt one of the key issues brought up by almost every patient, that is nausea and vomiting following surgery. Those of us over 50 remember anesthetic agents many years ago having a high incidence of directly causing post-operative nausea and vomiting. Ether was particularly problematic. Newer inhalation agents have a vastly lower incidence of causing nausea. Yet some recent studies report that in outpatient settings, nausea and vomiting following surgery are as high as 40% or 4 out of 10 patients. So how do we reconcile this statistic with the fact that anesthetic agents have drastically improved? The answer is that nausea and vomiting are not due exclusively to anesthetic agents. They're also strongly influenced by anxiety, drugs, means of administering the drugs, or even the use of oxygen. We previously talked about the value of the preoperative visit between the patient and the doctor. If you're anxious, don't hesitate to request an anxiety-reducing prescription to take the night before or morning of your procedure. Nausea and vomiting plummet when anxiety is reduced. The more relaxed you stay, the less the chance of an upset stomach. For patients who have not had food or water prior to surgery, a temporary state of hypoglycemia or low blood sugar can occur and contribute to nausea. This can be remedied by utilizing an IV that contains dextrose, another name for sugar, as a supplement. Nitrous oxide used during surgery diffuses out of the blood and can increase the size of gas bubbles in the body. These bubbles can manifest themselves in your stomach, your bowel, or even the inner ear. All of these alone or collectively can cause nausea. If your breathing is being supported a bit too forcefully by either a manual or mechanical device, it can increase the size of the normal gastric air bubble and cause vomiting. During surgery and into recovery, the choice of pain medications and antibiotics can directly influence nausea. Modifying the choices of medications at the time of surgery remarkably reduces the incidence of nausea following surgery. Certain narcotics and anti-inflammatory medications commonly used around the time of surgery are notorious for triggering nausea. Some of these cannot be avoided. In spite of any precautionary steps, should you suffer with postoperative nausea, there are medications that can treat it. For example, Zofran and Anzavent, 
were initially developed to treat nausea related to chemotherapy. Droperidol in small doses can be used without affecting the heart, a steroid. Dexamethasone in low doses can also alleviate nausea and vomiting. Not all medications work for each patient. Your treatment needs to be tailored to you, your surgery, your anesthesia, your health issues, and your preoperative medications. Some of these drugs may prolong your stay in recovery because they tend to induce drowsiness. New treatments easing postoperative nausea and vomiting are being discovered on almost a daily basis. The treatments are many and varied. All anesthesiologists have experience in this area. Your anesthesiologist will design an individualized program of anesthetics and supplemental medication in order to give you as smooth a ride as possible. Discuss the plans with your anesthesiologist prior to surgery. By using a combination of medications or altering technique, the occurrence of significant nausea and vomiting can be dramatically reduced. So when can you be reasonably sure you're free of the effects of anesthesia? Anesthetic agents need to be either processed by the body or removed from it. Some agents are metabolized and excreted, that is changed by the body into something else and then eliminated in the expired air or urine. Some are blown off as you breathe in the recovery period. The breathing off and elimination of anesthetic gases is the reason for the gradual return of consciousness in the recovery period.